Hey guys, welcome back for another episode. My name is Kate Bowman. Today we are talking about the six must-haves for your tiny house during the winter. My husband and I moved into our tiny house about six months ago, so we are definitely tiny house newbies. We've learned over the winter months that there are six items that you will definitely wanna keep in mind for your own tiny home. During the build process, we spent a lot of time worrying about and making certain that our home was going to be summer efficient with higher R value insulation in the floors, ceilings, and walls because we were really concerned about how hot the lofts were going to get. We were pleased at how well the house stayed cool during the summer months, so we just figured that the house would be warm and cozy during the winter. We have been surprised to find that the house has actually been quite chilly We've also had our struggles with condensation and humidity. With the Western North Carolina temperatures regularly in the 20s and 30s during these winter months, let me share the six items that we have found it important to include in your tiny. The first is a good pair of warm, cozy slippers. Although we have a higher R value insulation on our floors, we still find that they are very chilly. We chose not to insulate the skirting around our house, which we've heard can be a bit of a mistake. The moment I step downstairs in the morning, I slide my feet into my slippers and they stay there pretty much all day. Number two is space heaters. We ordered in a space heater very quickly after the temperatures started turning chilly. Even with our mini split, we find ourselves needing an extra heat source. We run our space heater nearly every day, sometimes all day, and when the temperatures get really cold, we actually set up a smaller space heater in the bathroom as well. Next winter, we plan to swap out the smaller space heater for one of the larger Lascos. We find that the Lasco works really well, it heats quickly, and it does a great job. Of course, there are a couple of cons to having the space heaters. The first is that even though it is a fairly small item, when you live in a tiny space, it's actually quite cumbersome. We keep the space heater set up most of the time and we find that even in our 10 foot wide space, it just feels a little extra crowded. And of course, another thing to keep in mind with a space heater is safety. I was actually a little hesitant to bring space heaters into the home just because, you know, I always am thinking of fire danger. As a result, we never run our space heaters when we're not home. And on those extra cold nights when we find that the mini split isn't enough and we do need to run the space heaters, my husband will actually sleep down on the couch just as a safety precaution. Number three is a ceiling fan. In my mind, a ceiling fan is essential. Not only is it aesthetically pleasing, but it also helps to pull the heat down from the 13 and a half foot ceilings. We run our fan constantly and during the winter months, we run the blades clockwise to pull the heat down. Also under the category of fan, we will talk about the venting hood or microwave fan above your stove. We have been surprised to find just how much humidity cooking and baking in such a small space creates. Whenever we cook or bake, we definitely run the microwave fan, which vents outside and helps to dissipate some of the humidity. A bathroom fan is also vital to run during your showers. I will admit that I occasionally forget because I enjoy stepping out into warm, steamy goodness. Number four is a hygrometer. You will often hear tiny house dwellers talking about their battle with humidity and man, is that a real thing. We actually didn't have issues with humidity until the cold weather started settling in. And it's been a big problem for us on particularly cold days. We ended up purchasing our temperature and humidity gauge during the big freeze that happened at Christmas time. During that time, the temperatures ended up becoming bitterly cold. We were finding that the walls, floors, and windows were becoming very cold. And because it was the holidays, I was doing a lot of extra cooking and baking. We had the mini split running at full blast. We had both of the space heaters going at max, and it was just creating a ton of dampness in the house. One thing that we were definitely not expecting that took us completely by surprise was that we ended up finding a puddle of water back behind the couch and then also up in the guest loft where my son was sleeping. We have a two foot bump out in that space and we were finding that the area that was exposed to those extra cold temperatures was just creating a ton of moisture. We're talking we needed towels, we were shoving shoes underneath the bed to try to create a little bit of space. It definitely was a thing. Having our hygrometer has made a huge difference in helping us keep our humidity under control. We really haven't had a ton of major issues with humidity since. 
Number five is a dehumidifier. I will say hands down that our dehumidifier has been this winter superhero. We run the dehumidifier almost constantly and we found that it has made a huge difference in our humidity levels. We haven't had any further issues with condensation on the walls and we rarely find any on our windows. These are wonderful things and we are constantly grateful for our dehumidifier. Number six is pipe heat cable and heat wrap. These items have also been a huge lifesaver for us. If you are not sure what pipe heat cable is, uh, you are in good company. I had no idea what it was before we moved into our tiny house. Basically the pipe heat cable keeps your pipe warm so you don't have to worry about freezing. The heat wrap helps to keep the heat cable in place and it also helps to distribute the heat around the entire pipe. We use this on the exterior piping to our hot water heater. We also use it on the long pipe that takes our gray water from the kitchen sink to the sewer. During the big freeze, that big long pipe actually ended up freezing on us, but as soon as we were able to get the heat cable in place, we haven't had any issue since. And a couple of other winter tips that we have put into practice is that on extra, extra cold nights, we do drip our faucets. I hate having to do that. It feels so environmentally unfriendly, but we have found that it is a must. And another thing that we do is that on the nights when it is very cold, we will open up all of our cabinets that have pipes beneath them so that the air can circulate and it keeps them nice and warm. And that is where I think we will leave off with this video. Our first winter in our tiny house has definitely had its ups and downs, lots and lots of learning curves, but these six winter must-haves have made all of the difference. If you too are new to tiny house living or you're about to purchase your first tiny home, I hope that these items will help you too. I also hope that you will hit that subscribe button and join me on the journey to living a more simple life. Until next time, bye. Standing underneath the lights, look into each other's eyes. Tired snowflakes are coming down, collapse into water when they.